Ozark Highlands Radio is brought to you by the Ozark Folk Center State Park in Mountain View, Arkansas. A wonderful way to enjoy yesterday. On the web at ozarkfolkcenter.com. And by Stone Bank, a community bank supporting entrepreneurs and farmers nationwide with loans guaranteed by the USDA, SBA, and Farm Services Agency. Learn more at stonebank.com. And the Arkansas Arts Council, empowering the arts for the benefit of all Arkansans. On the web at arkansasarts.org. <laughs> Greetings, folks. This is Dave Smith, host of Ozark Highlands Radio. Welcome to our show. This week, we'll hear award-winning country and western swing trio, The Farmer and Adele, recorded live at the Ozark Folk Center State Park in Mountain View, Arkansas. Mark Jones has found an archival recording of Ozark Originals' The Apple Family, and guest host Charlie Sandage profiles early country music superstar and Arkansas native Patsy Montana. All that this week on Ozark Highlands Radio. With the sounds of classic songwriting in their music and the future in their sights, the Farmer and Adele are reimagining the modern cowboy cowgirl while respecting its beginnings. Based out of Nashville, Tennessee, the Farmer and Adele, led by Grace Adele and Keenan Wade, are part of a new wave of musicians revitalizing Western swing music. With a star-studded record, award nominations, and their own morning radio show, the Farmer and Adele are a one-two punch of classic meets modern. Farmer and Adele. Yep, uh, yep, yep. <laughs> I was waiting for that. 
Uh, it always perks up in an interview. <laughs> yep. It does. So um, we chatted a little bit earlier uh, in the weekend, and you guys are originally from Ohio, now in Nashville. Fill us in on the journey from the Buckeye State down to Nashville. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. Ohio, the home state of the king of the Cowboys, Roy Rogers. Yeah, out of that's uh, right. Yeah, Portsmouth, mm-hmm. Ohio. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we uh, we kept visiting Nashville and all the roots music, the bluegrass, and the classic country music that we. Well, beforehand, though, Grace was going to be a rocket. That's true. Yeah, you were going to rocket uh, training camps, right, up in New York City. I, I was, mm-hmm. and I was. Uh, I did a couple auditions in New York City as a rocket, and then I decided to turn into a cowgirl. Let's try that one more time. Coyotes, off, out in the distance. Saddle up behind me. We could go trotting along. Saddle up behind me. Soon we'll be long gone. the tumbling tumbleweeds making their way down Peabody Creek. And if you listen in real closely, you can even hear those coyotes once more off in the distance. That's really good, Grace Adele. Wow. Ducks off in the distance. Chickens off in the distance. Uh, uh, Lambs off in the distance. Goldfish. No, that that, that never works. Uh, Coyotes once more off in the distance. Saddle up, get cozy as we gaze at the stars up above. We could keep on rolling, steady, easy going, singing our saddle up song. Oh, we could keep on rolling, steady, easy going, singing our saddle up song. That's Grant Siddell, ladies and gentlemen, with our number one hit. Tell me about it. I can't just gloss over that, so... <laughs> Uh, right. This was how yep. how long ago? Mm, I don't know, maybe twenty years ago, oh, something that like that. Ago. Maybe, yeah, okay. could be, could be. That. I mean, I know of the Rockets, but I didn't realize. I mean, if you were saying currently, I didn't know that was still a thing. But so, oh, the Rockets, yeah, they've have a long, long history. Okay, they date so back. you were going to have the sequin outfit, the, the long legs flying up in the air, and the oh, whole yeah. thing. Oh yeah, yeah. I Hollywood was training. Cowgirl. I was training to be a Rocket. I would go to summer intensive camps and and I would, uh, you know, learn their choreography. And then I went to. Uh, they held the auditions in the back of uh, Radio City Music Hall. So I went to some auditions and uh, their. Choreo- head choreographer taught the auditions that so felt like the master class and a live piano playing and yeah it was so much fun <laughs>
dead and pull the covers over. What's the use today? No need to wrangle doggies or fill the loft with hay. Just a wish and a hope, and I was riding in a rope like I was a year ago today. I'm just a quarantine cowgirl cooking for myself. I don't need everything that I had upon my shelf. Stacked up dirty dishes, I'll get to them someday. No use in denying, I'm stuck here anyway. Wish I was singing in the saddle with a herd of lazy cattle. Like I was a year ago today. Okay, so that's quite a transition from potential rocket to now cowgirl or cow, mm -hmm. cowgirl singer. Yes. <laughs> uh, so obviously you had music, show business, things like that in your background. How, tell me a little bit about the transition then from that to picking up guitar and, and where you are today. Yeah, and I, I'm my hometown of... Uh, Columbus, Ohio, I, I joined a couple bands around town and started singing and mm -hmm. I was kind of doing background singing for these bands and I, I basically was, I was a little bored so I picked up the guitar while they were working things out and, and worked on that and then when I moved to Nashville, I uh, well before Nashville I met Farmer Keenan, we met outside of a, um, it was during a, an art hop and his band was playing across the street from my band. Mm -hmm. I'm a lone cowboy just riding and singing, riding and singing along. Tall in the saddle, my spurs jangling, jingling are the rhythm of my lone cowboy song. Horse my companion as I'm riding down the canyon with my shadow by my side. As for kicking up the dust, knowing that we must leave our cares behind. From Phoenix to Del Rio, through the stage at Ocotillo, a roving cowboy's life's life for me. Yodelo, yodelo.
never get married The altar just ain't where I belong I'll be free as the wind Till I'm dead and buried Until then I'll ride and sing my song My horse is my companion As I'm riding down the canyon With my shadow by my side As we're kicking up the dust Knowing that we must leave our cans behind From Phoenix to Del Rio Through the stage in Ocotillo A roving cowboy's life's a life for me Yodel, yodel, Well, he's been rounding up all the notes on the fiddle, and here he is to sing you one. Cactus Jack Bird, what do you have for us tonight? Let's hear it for fine, Cactus Jack. Fine, fine night. Well, Farmer Keenan, why don't we sing that old cowboy classic, Carry Me Back to the Lone Prairie? Oh, yeah. One, two, three. <laughs> Cowboy, far away from home, far from the prairie where I used to roam, where the doggies wander and the wind blows free. Oh, my heart is yonder on the lone prairie. Oh, carry me back. Nashville, Tennessee, western swing duo, The Farmer and Adele, aided by fiddler Cactus Jack. In that first set, we heard an old classic from the Sons of the Pioneers, Saddle Your Worries to the Wind, followed by three of the band's original songs, The Saddle Up Song, The Quarantine Cowgirl Blues, and I'm a Lone Cowboy. And we faded that set out with a famous Carson Robeson song from 1934, Carry Me Back to the Lone Prairie. When we come back after this break, Come with me down to the vault for a visit with my old friend, Mark Jones. This is Ozark Highlands Radio. Welcome back to Ozark Highlands Radio. This is that time of the week when I like to go down and and visit with my friend Mark Jones. Mark takes care of uh, the hundreds and hundreds of recordings that we've made over the years here at the Ozark Folk Center. We've had shows here since 1973, and we recorded just about every one of them. And Mark's in charge of keeping track of all that stuff. Let's see what he's got for us this week. Hi, Mark. Hello there, Dave. Come on in. Well, so you got it nice down here. Well, uh, yeah. yeah. I, you swept the floor. I have. Well. I, I, I got one of them new brooms. It just <laughs> sweeps everything. <laughs> we need to get you one of those Roombas down here. Then you won't have to worry about it I, anymore. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. That'd be neat. Well, did you find a good tune for us this week? 
I did. You know how many, all the families that play, would get together, play music, and that was kind of their form of entertainment. And uh, there's so many even today that are still doing that. It's an Ozark tradition, isn't it? It is. Music's just carried down from father to son and mother to daughter, and it's it's a great thing. This family, uh, the Apple family, was around here for quite a while. And still around. That'd be Brad and Brandon Apple, their dad Larry, uh, their mom played bass. Yeah. Uh, boy, they, they've they been at it a long time. They live over in Batesville, not far from here. And uh, Brad and Brandon are still playing. We still get them over here every now and again, don't we? We do. We do. And I'm proud when they do come over. Yeah. And uh, it's an old tune called Who's Gonna Dance with Sally Ann? <laughs> Sally Ann. Let's hear it. Thank you very much. An old fiddle tune called Who's Gonna Dance with Sally Ann. Let her go, son. Brandon now he could play couldn't he good fiddle yeah player. so when was this recorded this was in 1992 yeah, let's see that would have made Brandon 11 years old at that time and Brad his brother maybe just a little bit a little older. bit older but they're great musicians and we're awful lucky to have them. we are Brandon won just about every fiddle contest anywhere within hundreds of miles of here so many that now he's a judge of fiddle contests that's right and still at it today that's right well that was a great tune thank you Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you, Dave. Let's get back to some more hot tunes from The Farmer and Adele. Their debut album, Into the Wide Open Sky, was selected to be featured as part of Nashville Public Library's Boombox series, a closely curated music collection highlighting the best artists in Nashville. Most recently, the band was awarded Best Western Swing Group by the Ameripolitan Music Awards. Here they are on our stage during our recent Cowboy Weekend, playing some original songs.
out there's no snow winter down you may think you can tame this wild weed off the range but she'll leave you there standing on the ground you might think you can tame one fence her in and make her want to stay but as soon as that weather starts to change in Watching her just roll away And what was the group you were playing in? What kind of music was it? It was called the Great Mad Hopes. It was uh, it was very jazz fusion. And then we happened to hear Grace's band playing across the street. And Which I, was I, what was she doing? Um, I was doing some folk, like it was original music that I was writing, but it was mm-hmm. of like kind of folk and roots music. And I've and I've always played with songwriters, uh, traveling folk songwriters since I was like eighteen around the country and. So, you know, Grace and I first met each other. She was playing guitar on a park bench warming up, and I happened to have a mandolin with me, and I was walking by, and being um, terrible at talking to girls, as I have been, I I had the social icebreaker of them all, the mandolin. Right, so you just went by, hit a few riffs or something. Yeah, (laughs) and she was like, hey, let's play a Hank Williams tune. So our first song we ever played together was Your Cheating Heart, and then the romance just blossomed from there. (laughs) Is that true? Yeah, that's true. (laughs) How long ago was that? Oh, man, many, many moons ago. Maybe (laughs) it's been maybe 13 13 years. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm
brilliant midnight tomorrow with the dark. With the dark. With the dark. How how the how did did you guys have a mutual interest in country, old country and western and cowboy music? Or is that something you sort of cultivated together? I no. like to blame Nashville for that. Okay. Uh, well, I I always loved jazz and being a mandolin player and knowing that I wanted to do more jazz than just bluegrass. You know, and I, I love bluegrass too and country music especially. But, you know, I first came to Nashville, Tennessee in 2001, and I went to the Station Inn because I had heard there was bluegrass there, and I just wanted to hear some cool bluegrass music, and the Time Jumpers were playing. And I went and saw the show, and I didn't, I didn't know what Western Swing was. It was my first exper experience hearing it. And this is in 2001, and my, my jaw just dropped. And I mean, I couldn't move the whole show. It was just, it really was one of those transitional moments. And I just fell in love. And was like, you can do jazz with hillbilly instruments. <laughs> think she'll come back? Yeah, she'll come back, right? Sure. Sure. <laughs> rain, rain, go away. Come again some other day. I wish my baby was here to stay, but she's gone, long gone. Raccoon climbing up a honey tree. Oh, how I wish you were here with me. Rain keeps falling. Why can't I see that she's gone, long gone? Rain keeps falling, why can't I see that she's gone long gone? Oh, what 
a gown And her name was Katie Brown Well, I took her out to ride about While the moon was shining down When we got home, we'd sit alone Out on the old porch swing And that dear little miss would give me a kiss While sweetly to her I would sing I love no one but you. Hey, hey, little hey, just say you love me true. We'll get married in June, have a long honeymoon, and then settle down for our life. Hey, hey, little hey, I want you for my wife. I need a little, 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 I had a gown, oh what a gown, and she left me one fine day. Well, I didn't mind because I find they were so. You've been listening to the farmer and Adele doing three songs they wrote, Don't Fall in Love with a Tumbleweed, Cowhand Lullaby, and Gone, Long Gone. That last tune was My Little Lady, written by Jimmy Rogers and Elsie McWilliams. When we come back, our friend Charlie Sandage will profile the life of a famous neighbor of ours, Patsy Montana. You're listening to Ozark Highlands Radio. Welcome back to Ozark Highlands Radio. Author, folklorist, and songwriter Charlie Sandage has a deep interest in the people, events, and indomitable spirit of Ozark culture. Here's Charlie. Let's play a little western style and a western swing. I want to be a cowboy sweetheart. want to learn to rope and ride. I want to ride o'er the plains and the desert. At west of the great divide, I want to hear the coyotes howling while the sun sinks in on the west. I want to be a cowboy sweetheart, the life I love. In 1935, Patsy Montana released her recording of I Want to Be a Cowboy Sweetheart. It was her rewrite of a Stuart Hamlin song called Texas Plains, and it became the first million selling country song by a female artist. From then, throughout the 30s and 40s and into the 50s, she was America's singing cowgirl. In fact, Patsy never did rope and ride, and her name, well, let's hear it from an interview with Jeff Llewellyn at the Arkansas State Archives in Little Rock. She was born Ruby Blevins, was a real name, in Jesseville, which is in Garland County, and she had like 10 brothers and, and, and then her. She was the only girl. In the, the only girl, but she started out playing the violin. Now, and, at least a couple of her brothers were musicians. Quite a few of them. Constantly during the, the interview with Bill McNeil, she talks about, and then another brother brought in a guitar, and then another brother introduced her to Jimmy Davis, and then another brother you know, said, you need to go to New York, and then another brother. Just, so it was always, her brothers were always kind of on the periphery of... Uh, influencing her. So as far as her roots are concerned, uh, it was like many, 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 many other Arkansas families that happened to be musical. Right. And that's that's where the 
Patsy Montana legend sort of begins. Right. We'll pick up the story in one of those Bill McNeil interviews that Jeff mentioned. Dr. Bill McNeil was the Ozark Folk Center's staff folklorist for 30 years. And one of his favorite things was to invite to the center people like Patsy Montana, who had enjoyed some national celebrity during their careers, and to explore their regional roots. In this segment, focusing on how her career was cradled in a musical family. Were all, uh, was everybody in the family musical? Uh, no, not really, but I did have three brothers out of the group that formed themselves at one time called the Three Buddies. And they worked mostly out in Nebraska and Iowa and Shenandoah, out in that part of this live radio was real popular back in those days, live radio shows. Uh -huh. But they didn't stick with it. They got smart and got out of it. <laughs> uh, when were they active? Oh, I would say 19, around 1940, I think. I, I don't know dates. Uh, how did you uh, yourself get started playing music? I mean, how did you first, you know, <laughs> It's so long ago. Well, I tell you, one night my brother brought in a violin. I don't know where he got it, and to this day I don't know where he got it, probably in a crab game or something. <laughs> but he brought home a fiddle, and uh, it's laid around there, and my mother started, suggested that I should take lessons. And I know that a lot of you city people might not understand this, but I paid for my lessons with eggs and milk and butter, whatever. You know, at a certain time of year, you might not know this, but a certain time of year the cows don't give milk for butter, you know, wow. and the hens don't lay. So I wouldn't take, didn't take lessons then, but I did take violin lessons. I never could fiddle. And I blame my mother because she used to say, you'll never learn to play unless you pat your foot. Well, the teacher wouldn't let me, so I was frustrated to start with. So that was my first introduction to actually a music instrument was a violin, personally. How would you like to learn how to yodel? I'm going to tell you how I learned to yodel. That'll help. Well, this kid you. <laughs> well, I went out to old Montana, where all the cowboys be, to try to learn to yodel, yodel a dee. First you take a deep breath, exhale one, two, three, and then you'll hear the yodel if you listen close to me. This is how to yodel. A lady, a lady, a lady, a lady, a little lady. This is how to yodel. One component of Patsy Montana's popularity was that she emerged at a time when the yodel was an important novelty in popular American music, and she was a major proponent of that phenomenon. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, now I'm going to teach you all to yodel just like me. It's easy while you're singing to go yodel -dee. Back to Patsy's interview with Bill McNeil. Uh, now, you were from Arkansas, and, uh, but you really... I gather did not get into entertainment kind of professional way until you moved west. Am That's I right. Correct? You're right. You're right. Yeah. My career, <laughs> my career hadn't really started. I've just had been getting experience. Had been working with two other girls in California, and uh, back there is where the name Patsy Montana happened. Uh, I'm getting a little ahead of your story, but it'll tie in later. Right. Uh, how many watched the Rose Parade on New Year's Day? The big parade. Well, if you see a cowboy in there that's larity swinging a larity, that's Monty Montana, the world champion roper. Well, back when he first started, our agent or something got the idea to put those three girls, which is the trio, with Monty and sort of make a little show. We played schools and things like that. So he sort of became known as a family. So that's where the Montana came, the Patsy Montana business. And one of the girls in the trio was named Ruby. Well, my, I mean, Ruthie, and my real name was Ruby, and that sounded too much like on the air, so me being more Irish, I guess, than anything else, they called me Patsy. I don't know how that happened. It just happened. I don't remember suggesting. So it just became Patsy Montana. It just, just happened. Patsy Montana's career included 15 years at WLS in Chicago, doing her first recording in New York with Louisiana Governor Jimmy Davis of You Are My Sunshine fame, and earning a place in the hearts of radio listeners all across America as a singer and significantly for a woman, a writer. Archivist Jeff Llewellyn adds a final note. And she was constantly coming back to the Folk Center and, and singing and telling stories and, and being interviewed by Bill and being real excited. And uh, you'll still see her in the Country Music Hall of Fame. And the female singers look back on her with respect 
that she was one of the first women to stand on her own and to, to, to write her own songs and, and be her own personality and not to let, whether it was the record companies or the Nashville people or even the Grand Ole Opry, tell her what she's supposed to be. She was going to be herself no matter what. Patsy Montana, Jesseville, Arkansas's Ruby Blevins. One, two, three, four. Hold a Thanks, Charlie. Let's get back to some boot stomping tunes from the farmer and Adele, along with their trusty fiddling sidekick, Cactus Jack. Their annual country and western Christmas party tour is a beloved tradition that travels annually nationwide, featuring classic Christmas tunes, original holiday songs, and their own take on the Nutcracker with a western swing twist. The band is also featured regularly on 650 AM WSM as the house band during the station's Grand Ole Opry pre-show and live radio spot coverage. Every night and the only law is right Back in the saddle again Whoop the tie I o rocking to and fro Back in the saddle again Whoop the tie I a I go my way Back in the saddle again I became very obsessed with Homer and Jethro, which were a comedy duo, but we really mainly liked their hillbilly jazz records. Oh, and they were incredible musicians. That's where I, mean, I first started yeah. to really hear the sock rhythm guitar of Homer Haynes. And, uh, and then, you know, that led me to seeing Ranger Doug for the first time at a live show. And you know, really, he was the only person I had seen living who was in the living category who was able to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, one to be I in. could see the style of music played. So I went up to Ranger Doug and asked him if I could take lessons. And he said, no, but he said we could hang out. He doesn't give lessons. So as I, I think he probably saw the, you know, the disappointment, the disappointment in my face. So he quickly <laughs> did say, but we can hang out. And uh, and then I thought, well, that's much better for my budget. So <laughs> <laughs> right. One, two, three. There's an open door. There's an open door waiting there for me. Waiting there for me. Through that open door. Through that open door 
my heart, old friends will meet reunion sweet where we never more will never more will part. Traveling down life's road alone and lonely, and your friends have gone before. Don't you know? trio sounds great. I know it's a little bit scaled down from what you normally do, but it's a great sound. The three of you, the voices blend together wonderfully. Uh, you've got some uh, great material. Yep. And I should, <laughs> I should say, uh, folks want to find out more, farmerandadele.com, or basically just pop that in your, in your Googler, and uh, it'll, it'll come up that way. So thank you guys for making the trip to Arkansas. Continued success. Thank well, thank you. you. So and much. the website is www.everybybodylovesthefarmerandadele.com. Dot com. Dot com. Perfect. <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you. Let's yep, ride, yep, Grace yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> When evening charms are over At our ranch house on the plains And all I've got to do Is lay around I saddle up my pony And go right on down the trail to watch the desert sun go down. Well, Cactus Jack, Grace Adele, I think it's time to ride down the dusty trail. Thank you all so very much for coming out tonight. Pip Glick coming up next. Love to sing and howdy with you after the show. Riding down the canyon to watch the sun go down. A picture that no artist there could paint. White face cattle lolling on the mountainside. I hear a coyote whining for its mate. Everybody, sway back and forth. Cactus plants are blooming. Sagebrush everywhere. Granite spires are standing all around. All around. Oh, I tell you, folks, it's heaven to be riding down the trail. To watch the desert sun go down. Thank you all so very much. We've had such a wonderful time. A big mighty yip to you. And we hope to shake and howdy after the show with you. So much more music to come.
Have a great night. It's the farmer in Adele. Dave Smith, ladies and gentlemen. The tallest band, tallest cowboy band in the world, maybe. Yeah. Nashville, Tennessee, Western swing band, The Farmer and Adele, opening their set with a Gene Autry song from 1939, Back in the Saddle Again. Next came another song written by the band, Open Door, and we finished up with a song made famous by Gene Autry and Smiley Burnett in 1935, Riding Down the Canyon. That brings us to the end of our show of Western swing music. This is your host, Dave Smith, Join us next week for more good music on Ozark Highlands Radio. So long, partners. Ozark Highlands Radio is produced by Jeff Glover. Executive producer is Darren Dorton. Additional support for this program comes from Arkansas State Parks, a division of the Arkansas Department of Parks, Heritage, and Tourism, with 52 unique reasons to visit the natural state. On the web at ArkansasStateParks.com. The Committee of 100 proudly supporting the Ozark Folk Center State Park since 1974. And by Stone Bank with roots in Mountain View, Arkansas. Stone Bank is a proud supporter of heritage musicians and small towns across America with government guaranteed loans for farmers, entrepreneurs, and communities. More information available at StoneBank.com. For information on upcoming shows and events, we are on the web at OzarkHighlandsRadio.com. Until next time, I'm Donna Farrar.